Oh, you thought that cat video you saw on Facebook this morning was cute? Nothing, you have not seen anything yet. Look at this, posted by scientists as part of hashtag cute up. And really scientists should know, shouldn't they? They're the ones actually studying these animals. It's turned into a bit of a competition for the cutest subject. The hashtag has now been mentioned online more than 5,000 times. Twitter, Instagram, a light with oh, the cuteness of it. Joining us from Virginia are the scientists who began it all, associate professor at Virginia Tech, Marcella Kelly, an ecology PhD student, Ann Hilborn. Marcella, Ann, great to see you. Um, I don't know if I'm compromising your integrity as judges, but which so far is the cutest? Oh, that is really a hard decision to make. Um, I, I'm probably gonna have to say, um, the baby sloth was one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite ones that really got, uh, that got tweeted so far, but I think Anne has other ones as well. Um, I was really fond of the tenric from Madagascar, and there are some incredibly gorgeous nudibranchs and JV fish that have been tweeted out. Uh, they are so cute. What is it that makes animals cute? Is it the big eyes? I think that's probably part of it, especially with baby animals, but there were plenty of animals that, um, did not have big eyes uh, that, that or scientists any, or tweeted any that eyes. I thought were surprisingly <laughs> cute, and I'm not I, I'm not sure why that is. I think that we just aren't really aware of a lot of the diversity of life out there, and so it's really great to see um, scientists tweet their favorite pictures of their cutest invertebrate, for example. Yeah, herpetologists, you said, got involved very quickly as well. I mean, I'm not, honestly, I gotta tell you, baby snakes just don't do it for me, but little tiny frogs, they are very cute. What in the world is, you know, there's, there's animals that I've never seen before. And then you have the scientists, the biologists who say, hold up, have you ever seen a plankton? And they're giving you sort of the microbiologist view of what you might see through a microscope, right? Were those cute? Yes, yes they were. And I think that's one of the great things about uh, this hashtag is it allowed biologists that study all sorts of organisms to sort of show off what they what they study and what they do and show them as, as being charismatic, even if they're something like plankton or diatoms even, that we don't usually think of as cute and fuzzy, but are really, can be very charismatic and gorgeous in their own way. And I mentioned that you're pursuing your PhD in ecology, but maybe human ecology should really be your field. It seems like you have a knack for creating uh, Twitter hashtags that go viral. Uh, yeah, it's a very unexpected sort of thing that has happened. I'm fairly new to social media, but um, it's, been, it's been really fun to engage with not only the biologist community on Twitter, but also sort of the general public through um, biology-related hashtags. So, um, cute off was one. Uh, you had field work fail, which seems like that would have really gone over well. And junk off, which my bosses said I should probably not talk about because it had to do with animal genitalia. In fact, one producer even wrote private parts. Do animals even have private parts? Uh, they have. They don't have the sort of standards of uh, morality and privacy that humans have, <laughs> but they do have reproductive organs. Everything needs to reproduce, and that's what Junk Off did. Is it showcased the amazing variety of strategies that animals and plants use to reproduce in a way that was fun and accessible to the general public, but also informative. There was even um, someone who studies plants who wanted to throw a fern into the mix as well that I saw. Uh, uh, so everybody wants to believe that their area of of study is the most cute, the most adorable, but can we just go back to puppies and kittens and why it is that they dominate? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, those are really adorable animals. Um, and uh, I think that it might go back to the big eyes and just our hu humans have always been associated with dogs and cats. And so I think that, you know, we have a real uh, connection to them. Um, but um, I think I was surprised at the amount, uh, I thought hands down that the mammals would win it and, and this became sort of competitive in that there was a team mammal and a team herpetology and a team bird and a mm. team, um, several other teams that developed and um, a lot of the other ones actually uh, fared pretty well and they weren't just your fluffy cute mammals. Uh, so what's the prize for the scientist who <laughs> submits the winning animal? 
everlasting glory. <laughs> Which is, all, which is all scientists really want anyway, right? Marcella? Yeah, we don't, we don't really do this for the money. Um, we do it to impress other scientists, mostly. <laughs> well, Marcella, Ann, you've impressed the whole Twitterverse. Congratulations. May Kudhoff continue for many, many weeks to come. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the all the animals that all the scientists have contributed, and I'm going to say... Uh-uh, mine beats them all. This is little Olive. She's a dappled dachshund and she has one blue eye and one brown eye. Can anyone top that dog? Anyone, anyone? Nope, nobody's raising their hands.